Let's talk about classes in Python, how to create them and how to use them. So first of all, I'm going to create a new document, classes.py, and I'm going to go ahead and edit it with Notepad++. Now, in order to create a class, the first thing you need to use is the keyword class. Typically, classes start with a capital letter and then have the rest of the name. So let's call this one something simple like point. So I'm going to describe points and shapes and a few other things. Then I have a colon. And then typically, the first method you have in a class, or first function type thing you have in a class, is the init function and you always pass in the variable self and if you have nothing to put in it you can just pass all right but that is the basic class now if i wanted to say well maybe a point has an x and a y coordinate i could add that as well so i could say okay we have self x and y and then i can set the values inside so self x equals the x that I pass in, and self y equals the y that I pass in. So then I have those pieces of information saved inside of the class. These pieces of information are called attributes. So x inside of the class and y inside of the class. Now self is because, well, this particular instance if you create one would be a single point and not all points have the same x and same y values so i can go ahead now and create class objects so i can say p1 equals point and then i can pass my x and y so one comma one and then p2 could equal another separate instance and then yeah, that's two comma two at this position right here this point we have two different instances of this point class p1 and p2 so let's go ahead and run this and it doesn't print anything but you know you can see it running so I will run it by first do directory listing. Oh, I need to save the file, I guess. All right, let's save that. And then we'll run it. And Python class py. And it runs. All right, it doesn't do anything. But at that point, I can do some other things. So let's do some comparisons. So print p1 equals p2 do they actually match and the answer is obviously no but we can save that run it and we can see that they do not match all right next i want to go ahead and try printing out the classes so i'll print out an instance of this class so i'll print this p1 and run that and it prints out this piece of information right here which is saying that basically it's a point object and it's got some address of the object so you can figure out where it is i can also go ahead and modify individual pieces of the class or get individual pieces so i could print out p1.x and let's go ahead and run that and you can see it prints out the number one and I could print out the Y as well or set the Y value so I'll go ahead and do that so I'll do p1 x equals 5 and p1 dot y equals 5 and I'll print out p1 and p1 dot y so I got print out both of these 
And so you can see it's going to print out the 5 and the 5. So we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see that it has now set the new values and it has printed them out. So these things, in a sense, become a great way to store data, but they also be much more complex because you can have classes inside of other classes. Uh, I could create right now a class square, and the class square might take as its input multiple locations. So it could do um, different points, P1, P2, P3, and P4. So maybe it takes four different points and then stores them. Self P1 equals P1. So P2 equals P2. And I could actually copy that line and make it faster. Three, four, and So at this point, I could go ahead and make another couple points. Maybe delete these things right here. Copy that. And make more points. So three. Actually, probably want to do something that makes sense. One, two, and maybe a two, one. And then you just have to figure out how you make the square and you say my s q equals square and i pass in the points now there's no indication of which point goes where so i get to do p1 p3 p2 and p4 and maybe that works maybe not maybe you need something better than that but then you can create a new object right there so a square object that has different points in it that may or may not make sense. I go ahead and run that. And you can see that it runs. We don't know what it's doing, but we know that it's running. So you can use this to create classes and organize information in a way that makes sense to you. And after that, we can start looking at more complex classes and what we can do with those.